So number nine is just asking us to evaluate the following integral, but we want to do it by using common area formulas. So what this is really asking you to do is to look at this one just geometrically and answer it by what the shape of the area looks like instead of actually doing the antiderivative. And for one part of this function, we actually have to do that because with the uh, tools that you guys have for anti-differentiation and calculus one, uh, you would not be able to integrate this first part of this um, function anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into two. Remember that if you have two terms that are added, you can take the integral of each of them separately. So instead of calculating the antiderivative, we're going to think about this graphically. So this first part, square root of 4 minus x squared, you should recognize that whenever you have a square root of a number minus x squared, that graph always looks like the top half of a circle. So its radius is 2 because this number is 4. So this, the square root of r squared minus x squared, if you think about the circle equation, general form of a circle that's centered at the origin is that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If you subtract over the x squared, you get that function. But if you wanted to solve for y, you'd have to take the square root of both sides, but you have to do plus or minus. <clears throat> so the plus part is the top half of the circle, and the minus part is the bottom half of the circle. So we just have the top half of a circle that goes from negative 2 to 2. That's what our integrative bounds are anyway, so that's fine. So we would just be wanting this area. Well, like I said, you in Calc 1 we don't have the tools to actually do this antiderivative, but we can do that pretty simply because we know the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. We only have half of one. So we're just going to do pi r squared over 2. And we know that our r is 2. So if r is 2, this would be 4 pi over 2, 2 pi. So this part of the definite integral results in 2 pi. Now the next function, 2x, <clears throat> now that's something you do have, you could do the antiderivative, but I'll show you a way here that you can know right away what this is without actually figuring it out. 2x is a line. y equals 2x is a line. It goes to the origin and looks like this. It doesn't matter that you drew it with a particular slope or not, really. So if you were doing the definite integral, let's say from negative 2 to 2, what you would be doing is you'd be finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. So really what you have are a couple of triangles. And the, the area of a triangle is base times height times half. In this case, since it's a slope of 2x, the height is 4 while the base is 2. And you can figure it out that way. But what you might notice is since this function goes through the origin and it's odd, 2x is an odd function, if you take the integral from any number to any negative number to the positive, same positive number, this is always going to be 0 because these two things have the same area, but this one's under the axis. So this part <coughs> is just 0. So anytime you have an odd function and your integral goes from uh, is symmetric, like it goes from negative a to a, whatever a might be, that integral has to be 0. And it's pretty, simply, it's pretty simple to show that by graphing it. So even if you had a complicated function here, as long as you knew it was odd, um, you wouldn't really have to do any other work. So that part's 0, so we get 2 pi plus 0, which means that our total area then is just the 2 pi from the first part. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.